Hi there folks, welcome to another gear video. I was looking on the Cry website quite recently, as you do, and I realized I'd never checked out one of these AVS detachable chest rigs. Now, the problem with these chest rigs is you've got a lot of interesting features, but they cost about $400 just for a chest rig, and then this harness part is another $200 or so. I wasn't going to pay that, to be honest, because it looked interesting, but I just really wanted to have one in my hands to see whether it would be any good for me or not. Um, so I looked around for a used one, managed to find this Coyote one. It is well used. It might not come up on the camera, but this thing has seen a lot of use. All these, uh, these metal loops back here are all rusty. The snaps on the holster pockets are all sort of corroded. So uh, it's got was drawn on it had all this uh, kind of like red sandy stuff mushed into a lot of it it stank when i got it it smelled so bad obviously i give it a good wash and uh you know even though it is well used it's still got tons of life left in it and it came with the harness and it's in a color that isn't so common here in the uk you got this and it's, it's an interesting chest rig and I, I took a load of pictures and i was getting ready to do do a video like this and then something that never happens happened i had a pm come through on an old forum an old airsoft forum that i registered on something like 17 years ago roughly a very long time and this guy messaged me i don't know how he found me on there but he messaged me and he said hey chris i've got some uh, i've got some rare cries wondered if you could tell me some more about them and, and all that sort of stuff because I guess people come to me for that sort of thing. And this was a guy who never posted it on said forum at all. He, he had like an even older account than my one. Never knew, didn't know this guy, never spoke to him. Anyway, he, uh, he sends me through the pictures. I was a little dubious at first. He sends me through the pictures and what he shows me is one of these right here. So it's the same chest rig with the harness, the, the yoke in a colorway that you cannot just buy from Cry at the moment. Um, what he told me is already on my website. If you go down to the link in the description, full9.net, there is a there's a blog post with a bunch more pictures of this thing, and there's a story about where it came from. Essentially, the gist of it is Cry made a, a small batch of these, I don't know how many, single digits, I believe, for some actors that were going to be in some Navy SEAL film or other. I don't know who the actor was. But yeah, they made just a few in Tropic for this film. The film was never made. Um, check out the website for more info on that. But yeah, he uh, he sent me over the pictures. This was I dubious it was a fake at first, a little bit. I've never seen a convincing looking fake of one of these, and I could tell from the pictures that this didn't have the hallmarks of a, a Chinese copy. Um, I've handled enough cry kit. I've handled enough just kit in general and cry stuff, especially. I've got a pretty good idea of good fake from the real thing even though some of them are quite convincing so yeah i uh i took this thing off his hands purely just to bring it to you folks here i thought while i still have it here just for a few more hours another day or so i'd get this one on video because i was going to go over the features of the avs detachable chest ring anyway i've got this one here might as well use this one so what we can do is put this down on the table run over what features this thing has. So what have we got here? Basically, it is a chest rig, pre-built. There's no uh, no pals here, not really. Um, so yeah, all sewn in pouches that can take armor, front and side plates. Um, and it, <clears throat> it's also split front design. Kind of old school in a way in terms of the, the pouch setup here and it can integrate into the Cry AVS system, obviously, hence the name. So, as I mentioned, there are two products here, the, the actual chest rig and the harness yoke. So the chest rig is this strap here, and then it's got hook. And then you kind of have to buy this harness, really, if you're not using it on an AVS plate carrier setup. You need to buy this yoke, which is this section and then the two meld together into a uh, chest rig. Starting off, main features on the front, 
four magazine pouches. These will hold two 30 round 556 mags each. There's no Velcro on them, just these one inch buckles. Was it three quarter inch? Side release buckles anyway. No Velcro, adjustable. So if you've got one mag, tighten it down. If you've got the two, you open it up, and you can fit two in there. This webbing is PAL spec. You could put like little pistol mag pouches, one on each if you really wanted. Um, webbing reinforcements, drainage grommets on each one, nice and tough. Uh, elastic retention, so when you do only have the one mag, or it just generally keeps everything tight so those mags are held in place nice and tightly where they are. Pretty, pretty decent pouches. They're not the fastest, you know, they're not like high speed Kydex or whatever. But if you want well covered magazines, they're good. The split front feature, big chunky YKK Vizlon zip here, opens upside down as you expect. To get out of the chest rig, you do have to undo this sternum strap and you also have to pop a stud here. Then you can separate the bib and then boom, you are out of the chest rig like a jacket rather than having to put the harness over your, over your head. Nice, uh, not the fastest purely because of the other features. Um, because you, can, you don't have to do this sternum strap, I suppose, but you probably would want to. You see, you've got three things there that you've got to, kind of got to do. On the bib, so we've got three rows of one inch loop. Two of them are PAL specs, so again, you could put some small pouches up here if you wanted. Your patch space, webbing loops here for PTTs. Um, attaching the end of your hydro tube, other radio stuff, whatever. Loads of these one wrap wraps for, again, mostly comms lines, hydro tubes, uh, aerials, mostly radio related stuff. This is heavily set up for uh, a dual radio loadout, as it were. Sternal strap is removable. There's even more loops on the Shoulder straps here, you've got vertical webbing, then you've got horizontal edging tape, I think, or some, some thin nylon just here. There's tons of stuff going on with this rig. Um, before we go on to the harness, we go to these side pouches. Huge GP pouches on either side. you got side release buckles on the top of each, so if you want to leave them partially open for certain things, that can be useful there. They're not actually linked by Cordura to the chest rig per se, and you can see these sections of webbing here. Um, oh, on the outside of the pouch you've got more connection points for radio stuff, grenades, TQs, I don't know, whatever the hell else. Um, that is PAL spec gap, so you could thread a pouch, the pouch could slide side to side there. Um, coil zip, nice rubber zip pulls, silicon, probably are. Um, just an excess strap. Inside each of these pouches, so we've got a, got a big piece of elastic on the front. It has no bottom to it. That will be for securing a radio, I'm pretty sure. I'm not a radio guy, I don't know anything about comms. But then on the back, similarly, you've got another piece of big, high, high quality elastic. This is the strong stuff. And I believe you can fit a side plate in here. I don't own any side plates. Not American style ones anyway, just the ones we get issued. Um, but it looks big enough for some of the slimmer side plates. Um, and they're, they're, those will be retained and there's, there's a bottom to that retention there. But on that real big pouch, you got two of those, they're mirrored. Left to right, exactly the same stuff inside of each. Flipping her over, there's quite a lot on the back. Yeah. Talk about the actual main front plate carrying capacity. I'll just open it up a bit here. So we've just got a fake PTS plate in here right now just to show because I don't own a real sappy plate, but this one is the exact same size as a medium sappy. So you've got this uh, webbing strip here through a metal tri-glide. Undo that and you can Take your plate in and out. Um, this secures down with Velcro if it's not in use. 
this elastic on the inside I think will be I don't know it's a lot narrower than the medium plate so I'm not sure if this is just to hold a small plate in place um, as you can see there's actually there's a bit there's a fair bit extra room with this medium so I would say you could probably fit a large plate or if you've got a a medium in terms of height and width but it's a real thick medium you know it, maybe it's a cheaper plate um, and it's it's a yeah just a real chunky medium then you can get that in there as well because of the elastic here when the plate retention piece here isn't in use that velcros down the bib can I'm not really sure what the design intent here but if you snap the bib off it's it's anchor points on the front of the harness and then you open up this velcro and fold the bib in just the right way so that this loop lines up so you put fold in it and that can velcro down like so and that gets out of the way obviously you can't use a plate at this point but then you got just that little bit more breathing room as it were on your chest if you don't need the bib then fold it away these 45 degree straps seem a bit odd to me so they go to metal loops here but then up the top where they meet the harness and I've checked the website this is how you run it um, they're just free to run through that section I haven't used this thing this is just a features overview I don't know how well that really works out in practice doesn't seem great to me I probably want to like put a zip tie or some tape just there to secure that so it can't slide anymore but I don't know. For the back strap, this is a, a feature I do like. What you have here is it's one inch webbing, same as many other brands, but the problem, if, if, the problem with just webbing back straps is if you get them tight enough that your chest rig doesn't move, you then can't really move and breathe yourself super well and you feel yourself being kind of crushed. So elastic in there, at least plastic pieces that step up from one to two inch and then heavy duty two inch elastic it's not like the weak stuff so your whole chest is going to bounce it'll stay nicely in place but allow you to breathe and move around just that little bit better you get two of these um i think they just call them a pistol pocket because holster is being very generous to these things these are just about the worst holsters i would ever seen you know you can fit just a standard service size handgun into these the thing only thing that secures them is this press stud and webbing strap they won't come out on you or anything but there's nothing to protect the trigger guard there's no kydex here um, there's nothing else to lock it in it's literally just a pocket and a pistol will sit in it and then you can carry a pistol and you can get it out probably with some practice quickly enough uh, yeah not ideal but then it's not really it's just for carrying a pistol really like if you need a holster just have a holster on you i would say if you really have to have your waistline clear then you can move a, a pistol up to here and probably attach some pistol mag pouches elsewhere on the rig the back strap can be changed position so you've got one tri glide here and another one there could maybe attach it to this middle point but the middle point is different and these metal triglides are sewn in the two of them so i'm not again sure what the middle point's for that's everything on the back rear of the harness just a little loop field you've got metal probably steel loop that your strap goes through here um, nothing else to it you can see the webbing reinforcements this is really strong these are but yeah you can get under them so you can clip these on to these vertical stretches of webbing You've got about two inches there got some spacer mesh that'll sit up against the back of your neck carry slash drag handle not sure what these loops are for either either these metal ones or these webbing ones i genuinely don't know there's so many loops uh, just yeah just loops and loops and loops all, all over this thing and i don't know what all of them do to tell you the truth hopefully someone in the comments I know EOD Fish has a video, look him up, EOD Fish, uh, here on YouTube. I think he already has a video on these. He probably tells you because he knows way more than me. Harness is padded. There's a little bit of foam in there. Not a ton, but 
definitely better than nothing. Over the top of the shoulders, you've got tons of places to root. Hydro tubes, cables, aerials, whatever the hell you are doing. And I think that about covers it. There's so much on here, it wouldn't surprise me if there was something I missed. But that's the majority of it. It is an armor capable chest rig. And probably a lot of this stuff is to rig it up to the AVS in the plate carrier format, I would imagine. The things that I don't know. So yeah. I do like the split front, I like the back strap. Pouch is pretty decent, lots of GP space. You can armor it up with real armor, not this foam shit. Um, so yeah, it's nice. Should you buy one of these if you're spending your own money? I, as I say, haven't used one yet, so I definitely can't tell you that. Nice thing to get issued if it fits your mission requirements, whatever the hell. Um, I talk about this stuff. It's tricky on here because I look at my analytics, I look at the messages I get, and I've got a lot of... Well, number one viewership is the US. It's a mixture, mostly civilians, a fair few military, some British military. I get watching uh, a lot of airsofters, paintballers, just collectors. Um, so I try and just go over the features and try and discuss uh, kind of generically so that everyone can figure out whether a piece of kit is for them or not. But that's hard to do when all of those things, you know, have such big differences in them, in, you know, in those different roles, whether it's hobby, work, uh, whatever, um, you know, infantry guy, rear echelon dude, like, um, air softer, SF guy, SWAT guy, you know, I've got some, a couple of SWAT guys on Instagram that mess me now and again, just chatting, you know, they don't ask me for advice about tactics, because I don't know shit, but, you know, I have a lot of kit, so sometimes people ask me about things, but anyway, at current retail I believe these are over $600 if you want this chest rig set up where you can just wear it without the ABS plate carrier I'm not sure there's $600 worth of materials and labor time here to tell you the truth other cry products I can kind of see it like the G3 combat pants a few hundred bucks a couple hundred bucks you kind of see it I it is very complicated there's a lot of sew time and cut cutting um, of fabrics that's gone into this and Obviously the fabric's all high-end, it's legit uh, 500D mil spec Cordura throughout with all the webbing, all the buckles, every, everything is as good as you can get. Although, the, but then again, there's nothing particularly, this is quite an old design, it's nothing super advanced, there's no, there's no Tegris, there's no laminates that I can see. So materials wise, I don't see a ton of cost in here compared to some of the most super modern stuff. Some of the, the axle stuff, some things that Spiritus are doing, some of the more recent products. This is quite an old cry product. The only thing I can think is, is just the sheer amount of man hours that someone's going to have to sit at a sewing machine, just sewing and just constructing every little bit and putting it all together. I think that's, um, that's definitely a part of it. Military contract pricing may have some influence there, for those of you who know how that works. By the way, there's a lot of features to it. Manufacturers and retailers' websites are never very good at actually showing you all those features. Hence why I do these videos. If you like them, uh, leave a thumbs up. Or uh, well, the main one to do these days is comment down below. Any questions you've got, you know, any other chess rig designs you like. This is a bit uh, reminiscent, well, as I think about it, about the old Eagle Rhodesian Recon Vest, the RRRB, super old thing. That It's what Snake War and Metal Gear Solid 4 except obviously that was all PALs, so this is actually far less modular than the the old Eagle. I don't know if they even make that, I don't, they probably stopped making those like a decade ago, at least for, for normal like retail. But they were super popular for a while, and this is this is about that size. If you put a load of PALs pouches onto an Eagle RRV, you'd end up, you know, if you, you could definitely fit two big GPs and four rifle mags on one of them. And that had a bib as well that you could fold down and it held a plate. So yeah, a lot of, um, sort of DNA sharing there. Whether it's worth the money for you is entirely up to you. If 
it happens to be, you know, if this pre sewn config is what you need, then sweet, you know, and you need a chest rig that holds armor. I'm not really aware of many alternatives, but I don't know how many people are going to need a front plate and no rear plate because, you know, black hole down, right? Other than that, just for watching. Um, if you want to help me keeping my website going, do have a subscribe star. Not sure I've talked about that on here before. It's on the website. Link to the site is down in the description box along with all the social media as you'd expect. Thanks for all the thumbs up, comments and just viewing the video guys. That's, uh, that's what keeps the whole thing going. And yeah, I shall close out there. Cheers for watching. See you next time.